Yes. Today we are going to discuss about the eye ball, a second layer, a first layer already we have discussed there is a sclera and the cornea or fibrous layer. So in this session I am going to cover the second layer. So myself Dr. Mulendra Badigir, Department of Sharachana, Grameen Ayurvedic Medical College, Therda, Karnataka. See, when you are observe the eye of another person, a different color of the eyes are seen in the society. It may be blue color or it may be white color, dark brown color or different colors. So these are all the colors. Actually, white part is the sclera and the circular part is called cornea. Cornea is a white and transparent. It is a white and transparent. Then why different colors are seen? Because posterior to the cornea, there is another deeply pigmented circular curtain will be there. Because of the presence of that curtain, it is looking like a different color. So if the curtain is looking like a blue color, then it is a blue color. White color, then it is looking like a white color. It means the color of eye or color of cornea is directly depends upon the color of the a curtain like structure present posterior to the uh, cornea that is called by the name of iris. Iris is the uh, second part, sorry, uh, iris is the part which is comes under the second layer. So we will discuss the second layer or this is the vascular coat. See this is the vascular coat, chocolate color, circular part. So this complete is the vascular coat. Vascular coat is divided into this posterior part is called by the name of choroid and this part is called by the name of ciliary body and this projected part is called by the name of irish so one by one we are going to discuss first we are going to discuss about the choroid and one more thing we should remember this vascular coat is also known as uvillary tract u v e a l uvillary tract it is also known as choroid choroid is the a posterior part of the uvillary tract it is the posterior part, the uvular tract is a posterior part. It is a thick pigmented layer and it is a chocolate color or brown in color because it is a highly vascular layer and it consists of the two surfaces. One is the outer surface and the other one is the inner surface. Outer surface is related to the sclera but it is separated by the sclera. That space between the sclera and the choroid, that space is called by the name of uh, suprachoroidal space and inner surface is attached to the retina or you can say this uh, what um, choroid is sandwiched between the sclera and the retina choroid has uh, divided into layers the first is uh, imagine first there will be a sclera after the sclera there is a, between the sclera and the choroid there is a space that is called by the name of suprachoroidal space inside the suprachoroidal space there is a structure that is called by the name of suprachoroidal lamina this is called suprachoroidal lamina after the suprachoroidal lamina then there is a vascular coat that is called a vascular lamina and after the vascular lamina there will be capillary then it is called by the name of capillary part that is the capillary lamina and after the last one is the line that is called by the name of basal lamina next we are going to discuss about the another structure which is called ciliary body this is a thick part of the uvillary tract see it is a choroid this is the iris between these two structures there is a thick triangular part will be there that is called by the name of uvillary tract this ciliary body lies between the iris and the choroid. It means anteriorly there will be iris, posteriorly there will be a choroid. It lies between the iris and the choroid. Here see this is the triangular part. When we have taken the cross section, then it is looking like a triangular in cross section. See, triangular in cross section. So this is the apex, this is the base, this is the outer surface and this is the inner surface. See. When you have taken the cross section, it is the base here and this is the apex and this is the outer surface and this part is the inner surface. See, apex is facing towards the choroid. See, this is the apex, apex is facing towards the choroid. Base is facing towards the iris. See, this is the base, this is the iris, base is facing towards the iris. And it consists of two surfaces, one is the inner surface and the other is the outer surface. See. Outer surface is attached to the sclera and inner surface is the free and which is related to the fluid here that is a vitreous humor. So in this picture you can see very clearly so this is the outermost layer this is the cornea and this is the sclera this is second layer chocolate color layer so this is uh, what you are calling choroid 
and this is a ciliary body ignore the ciliary body choroid choroid part so it is the outer surface it is a completely attached to the sclera and this is a inner surface see outer surface is contact with the sclera and inner surface is uh, two parts divided one is the finger like projection small finger like projection part and remaining one is the smooth part the projected part or finger like projection having part is called by the name of parus plicata and remaining part smooth one that is called by the name of parus plana this is a parus plana this is parus plicata then parus plicata consists of the two parts of small finger like projections this small finger like projections are called by the name of uh, ciliary uh, process and from the ciliary process a thin a thread like projections are coming out and they are attaching to the lens so these are called by the name of suspensory ligament of the lens next we are going to discuss the internal structure external to the internal outermost layer is called by the name of epithelium see here it is a epithelial lining it is a double layer two layers are going to cover the same epithelial is going to cover to the iris also it is uh, covering the epithelial lining and second one is the interior there is a presence of the muscles they are called by the name of ciliary muscles ciliary muscles are mainly three types radial muscles these are radial and meridional muscles these are the meridional muscles and circular muscles you see in the center these are the circular muscles when these muscles are contracting at that time the ciliary body moves forward when ciliary bo body moves forward then suspensor ligament become relaxed when suspensor ligament become relaxed then lens is going to bulge when it is bulging it means it is adjusting the curvature of the lens according to the near vision because of that reason so these muscles are also called by the muscles of accommodation for the near vision for the near vision lens should be bulged to bulge the lens there must be a relaxation in the suspensor ligament to to create the relaxation in the suspensor ligament muscle should be contract after contracting they are moving forward there is a relaxation their lens become the bulge so because of that reason this is called muscles of the accommodation and next come to the interior there is a presence of the stroma see inside this a stroma is present stroma is nothing but the continuation of the choroid part is continuing here and this stroma consists of the collagen fibers these collagen fibers are going to support the blood vessels and nerves present inside the ciliary body and see here here is the ciliary body these are the suspensor ligament of the lens this is a lens when this ciliary muscles are contracted the suspensor ligament of the lens become loose when they are loose or relaxed see lens become the bulged when lens is bulged it is existing for the near vision when this muscle is relaxed then the suspensor ligaments are going to stretch and lens will get the biconvex uh, position see the person is standing here uh, just observing this picture a person is standing away see when he is coming near according to that lens is going to bulge for example you are uh, reading the bd chorasa textbook uh, when you are keeping the uh, too much away at that time lens is in the biconvex when you are holding the book near to your eye then lens is going to adjust according to the adjustment lens is going to bulge the lens bulge is taken place by the relaxation of the suspensor ligament suspensor ligament why they are relaxing because the contraction of the ciliary muscles next last point we are going to discuss is the iris iris is the a circular curtain like structure which lies between the cornea and the lens or you can say this iris separates the anterior segment into anterior chamber and the posterior chamber this iris is located between the cornea and the lens the central part of the iris has a opening see here central part has a opening this is called by the name of pupil and peripheral part is attached to the ciliary body and already i explained the anterior segment of the chamber is divided into sorry anterior segment of the eye is divided into anterior chamber and the posterior chamber by the iris see anterior chamber and the posterior chamber this is the iris this is a cornea the junction of iris and cornea is called iridio corneal junction this iridio corneal junction is also known as angle of the filtration here the aqueous humor is going to filter because of that is it is called angle of the filtration 
So this question was asked once in the exam for the two marks. Please students remember only once it's asked. And next come to the point layer wise anatomy of the iris. Outermost layer covering that is the anterior surface and last there is a posterior surface back and it consists also stroma and iris is also having the muscles. The anterior surface is covered by the mesothelial cells and posterior surface is a pigmented double layer of the epithelium which is a continued by the ciliary body and attached to the ciliary body and stroma in the stroma it consists the vessels connective tissue and pigment cells these pigment cells are very important depends upon this pigment cells the color of the iris is depends and Around the eye, the artery is going to make one circle. So this is called a major arterial circle. And around the pupil, there is another arterial circle is going to form. That is called minor arterial circle. And iris consists, also consists the muscles. They are called iris muscles. The iris muscles are two types. One is a spinter pupillae and the dilator pupillae. When these muscles are relaxed, dilated, that is a pupil is going to dilate. That is called a dilator pupillae. Constriction of the pupil, that is called a spinter pupillae. Dilator pupillae and the spinter pupillae plays an important role in the contraction and relaxation of the pupil. So this is about the second layer. Thank you.